Hi everyone, it's your friend Doris the Coder back with another video. Today's video is my very first coding quick shot. Now, if you've uh, been on my channel and seen some of the things that I announced would be coming, um, this is the first coding quick shot. So quick shots are kind of guideline summary videos. So um, they cover certain areas. This one is dedicated to procedural coding. As you see on the screen here, we're gonna be covering cabbages. All right, coronary artery bypass grafting procedure. So these are a little longer videos just to kind of give you a heads up on that. But at the end of it, you'll feel a lot better. So if you are a new coder, a uh, coding this area for the first time, a coder preparing for the certification exam and just really having a hard time with these guidelines, it's my intention that at the end you get it. And I would love your feedback. I never remember to remind you to subscribe until the end, but remember to subscribe if you get valuable information and share commentary about uh, my wheelhouse and what I can do to help you. So jumping right into that, I'm going to cover five areas related to coronary artery bypass today. I want to make sure you understand what the procedure is, why the procedure's done, the CPT codes for reporting those procedures, the uh, package for those procedures, and a guideline summary that's going to help you with proper use. And then I'll give you three questions at the end to ask yourself to properly report these procedures. So what's a cabbage? Um, a really good vegetable, depending on <laughs> how you look at cabbage. But this particular cabbage, abbreviated CABG, is for coronary artery bypass procedures. Put another way, these are the coronary arteries. So what you see here, these big, these red vessels that kind of come off and you can't tell, but this red vessel here actually comes off the aorta. So the coronary arteries are vessels that feed the heart. How wonderful is the heart that it is not only pumps heart blood to the entire body, but it also pumps blood to itself, right? So it does that because there are connections, there are vessels that come off the aorta and feed the heart. Um, now you have five vessels from a naming perspective potentially in the heart um, there are modifiers that you'll need to use so i'll actually cover those with you when i talk about the cpt codes but the coronary arteries are arteries that feed the heart so this beautiful one here this is the right coronary artery and it subsequently branches this one here not the greatest picture of it is the left coronary artery and then it branches to go to feed the back of the heart and then goes down the front of the heart. So the coronary arteries on the right is the right coronary artery. And then you've got a vessel that is like behind this blue. Imagine you could see the vessel, uh, the start of this vessel here. Well, let's do it here. Like the start of this vessel here, okay, would be the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery splits, right? It bifurcates into two. One area loops around the back, the other goes down the front of the heart. So they have a vessel called the left anterior descending, right? Which is uh, the, comes off the left coronary artery, goes down the front of the heart, anterior descending, goes down the front, LAD. So that modifier is gonna be LD. Your right coronary artery is gonna be RC. And the left coronary, that first branch before it starts to bifurcate is LC for the left main coronary artery. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, the LM, the left main coronary artery. And then the LC is the circumflex artery, which is the artery that loops around. So that would be right coronary one, left main two, left anterior descending three, left circumflex four, and I said there were five, so was I wrong? No, there's also one that not every pa patient has. It's something called the ramus intermedia. So normally the left coronary artery will bifurcate, but instead of it bifurcating or splitting in two, it trifurcates. That third little vessel is the ramus, the ramus intermedius, right? So for coding purposes, um, that's RI. So if you are coding and you're not in this section, but if you're coding and you're doing a procedure where you have to identify the coronary artery, that becomes important because you want to identify what vessel is being treated. Okay. All right. So that talks about the arteries themselves. So when a patient has coronary artery disease, um, what could happen is they have some kind of occlusion or obstruction. And I guess that's what they look to kind of open up here because this is not, this is not normal looking heart. 
right? So what happens is we don't have an all accessory blood flow to the heart for the most part, as far as the heart muscle. So the condition known as a heart attack uh, occurs when blood is held back from the heart muscle itself. And when that happens for too long, a part of the heart dies, right? That's what a coronary um, uh, uh, heart attack is, right? A myocardial infarction. It's part of the heart muscle dies. So what a, what a provider might do for a patient who has a blockage or an obstruction, um, either an acute one like a thrombus, or they have mainly when they have arteriosclerotic heart disease, where fat hardens on the walls of the arteries where the openings aren't quite as open anymore, they become a lot smaller. Uh, they can actually, instead of intervening with stent and angioplasty, they can actually just go around the area to area of blockage. So just like the aorta, normally the, uh, coronary arteries come off the aorta, instead of that, they can make a little hole in the aorta and they can attach a vessel like this. Now, this is actually not a vessel. This is this looks like something um, like synthetic and I don't understand them to use that so much in the US. We usually use arteries except for example, but they'll take an artery or a vein. It doesn't make a difference which one, I just need a tube. So, and this is gonna help you later with coding. I can use an artery and I can connect cut a little hole into the aorta and connect an artery here to bypass around this area of obstruction. Or I could take a vein from a blood vessel and I can, again, make a little hole here and go around that area of obstruction. So no matter whether I'm using an artery or a vein, I am still bypassing or going around an obstruction in an artery, a coronary artery bypass, okay? So that is what the procedure is. They do this again for obstructive conditions or occlusions like arteriosclerosis. So that's the why it is done. Um, we'll look at the codes now. The codes in CPT, nope, look like this, okay? So we have 33510 and it's coded based on the number of venous graphs. So we've got a couple of code ranges. These codes 33510 is the first in the series are for venous graphs. So again, when I'm bypassing and instead of using something red, like I use a vein instead of an artery, still bypassing around this, an artery, but I'm gonna use the structure or the conduit or the supply of an, um, a vein, I'm gonna select my code potentially from 33510 to 33516 based on the number of vein graphs I use. And I'm going to define number of graphs in a second. Um, I also have a range for arteries, 33533 three, three, five, three, three, to 33536. Three, three, now you'll notice single, two, three, four or more, just like in veins, I had single, two, three, four, five, six or more, right? So when I'm coding, I need to know where, whether I'm using arch arteries or I'm using veins. Now, what could happen is the provider could do a combined arterial venous procedure, meaning still bypassing coronary arteries, but I use some arteries from the body and I use some veins from the body. And when I do that, I have an alternative code range I can use. First, let me say with regard to the veins, when I have a procedure that uses veins. I am only going to use one code from a venous range. Okay. So this can be one range for the veins, or I could use this range from the veins. Okay. What I noticed by looking at this second range, 33517 to 33523, it's numbered the same, single, two, three, all the way up to six. But this says list is separately in addition to the code for the primary procedure because these venous procedures are add-on codes. Okay. The other venous procedures, let me go back, 33510 to 16 are parent or standalone codes. Okay. And notice it says coronary artery bypass, vein only, meaning I did a cabbage and I only use veins during that procedure. Or I could say, I did a cabbage and I used, come on, move with me. I used veins and arteries, and this is the number of veins, okay? So when a procedure includes veins, you either use 33510 or 
33517 to report your venous procedure. So if you are sitting for your coding certification exam, okay, and you see 33510 and 17 used together, it's wrong because you're only reflecting veins, okay? It is also wrong because the parentheticals under 33517 specifically say they should be used with, and this is how it says in code correct, it reads different in your book, it says should be used with, and it gives you this range, which is the arterial range, okay? Which takes me to my next point. So I can have a cabbage that uses just veins, just to be clear, which is reported with this code range that says vein only or veins only, or I could use this code range to reflect the number of veins. Okay, so my option one is I'm using only veins, 33510 to 16, or I'm using veins and arteries, so I have to use 33517 to 523 to reflect the number of venous anastomotic points distally. I'll come back to that. Now, when a procedure uses arteries, there's any arterial involvement, you only have four codes to use. Okay, coronary artery bypass using arterial grafts single arterial graph, two, all the way up to four or more, right? This range is going to be used anytime an artery is involved. So this code can be used all by itself, uh, when meaning it's just arteries, or it can be used to reflect the number of arteries in a procedure that uses arteries and veins. You have an instruction in your guideline that looks similar to this code also for uh, arterial, uh, arterial venous grafts, right? Uh, because 33533 is only reflective of the number of arterial grafts. That's why it says single arterial graph. If you use arteries and veins, remember I told you you had two ranges for your veins. Your first range was 510 to 6. Your second range was 517 to 3. I would use one of the codes from 517 to 523 to reflect the number of veins in a procedure that uses veins and arteries. The parent code that is saying use in addition to the primary procedure, the primary procedure in that regard is going to be the arterial code. Okay, so when I'm doing cabbages that use arteries, my arterial code will come from here, 533 to 536. Um, and if I use veins, I'm going to use the 517 range. If I'm using only veins and no arteries at all, I'm going to use 33510 to 16. Make sense? So those are the codes that's relative to cabbage. Now let's talk about the package, right? The package for venous codes. So remember, you've got two ranges, 33510. Um, to 335173. So this is the same rule. And this is where when you're studying guidelines or you want to, want to understand coding rules or you're just coding and you want to do it properly, you've got to understand what the guidelines are kind of telling you, right? So a lot of times it looks like a lot of guidelines when in essence, you'll see some of the same data. Like one of the things they tell us when we use veins is that whether you're using veins only or veins with arteries, the rules that apply to veins is that the saphenous vein is included in venous procurement. So let's just give you a vision of what the, not the nerve, sorry, Doris, why did you do that? Saphenous vein, right? What the saphenous vein looks like. So the saphenous vein is like a pretty long vein. I think the longest vein, don't quote me on that, vein in the lower leg, okay? So they like to use this vein. As a matter of fact, in cabbage procedures, it's kind of like the most common vessel used, not the only one, but the most common. So what you find in your guidelines is your guidelines say relative to venous use, whether you're using veins only or veins and arterials, the venous package includes procurement or going to get or using the saphenous vein. So you should see in your operative report as a detail, you'll see a leg incision, right? You'll see a leg incision and the saphenous vein would, would be removed. So they literally go to the leg, make an incision in the leg, cut the section of vein that they want, and then they put that vein 
Uh, they got to connect it to an anastomotic point. So this particular one uses like the subclavian, right? Or they could, they usually use the artery. It doesn't matter. They basically just need to get blood flow from an artery to take that to a particular area. This actually is not subclavian. I'm sorry. This is the mammary. I'll cover that in a second. Okay. So that's the rule for veins, that it includes the saphenous vein, meaning you don't get to report an additional code for saphenous vein procurement, okay? Only the saphenous, however, so only the saphenous is bundled. Well, I've got other veins in my leg, all right? As you see here, I probably should have not Googled like saphenous itself. I have a femoral vein, for example. Um, I have... Okay, so this is a good image, right? So I have a femoral vein, I've got saphenous, I've got other little veins, a eh, popliteal vein, I've got veins in other places, but the package only bundles or does not allow you to report the saphenous vein graph. If you get another kind of vein from the upper extremity or lower extremity, you get to additionally report for uh, procuring, obtaining, or acquiring that vein as an additional code. So you can unbundle that in the venous system. Now we'll talk about that second code range for arterial procedures, all right? Arterial procedures, again, I'm still bypassing coronary arteries, so I'm still doing a cabbage, but instead of using the blues, which are the veins, I use the reds, right? The um, arteries. So I'm using arteries to bypass. Now your arterial codes and package is going to include all arteries. Okay. You're able, you're not able to report any artery except arteries that come from the upper extremity. Okay. So this is where your anatomy comes in. You have to say, well, what arteries are in the upper extremity? Well, the radial arteries in the upper extremity, for example, um, that's one vessel that's in the upper extremity. So you want to find the artery used and see the location. If it's in the upper extremity, you get to report it. If it's somewhere else, you don't get to report it, right? So the internal mammary, remember I said, oh, no, that's not parotid, it's the mammary. The internal mammary is the artery that goes to the breast. They can just reanastomose that. So they can take it from feeding into the breast tissue and just redirect it to the area around the obstructed area. Right. And then they don't have to kind of make that extra incision to kind of get it in the tag. They don't have to anastomose it and put another puncture in the aorta um, because that vessel is already coming off uh, the subclavian. The internal mammary comes off the subclavian and I just need to reposition it to go to the heart instead of going to the breast tissue. OK, so that's part of your package. So when you are billing veins, you're going to pick up any vein that's not saphenous that's procured. When you're doing arteries, you're not gonna code for any additional codes for arterial procurement unless those vessels are in the upper extremity. That makes sense? All right. So that's what your guidelines tell you in that regard. Now, what can also happen is you have some procedures that might be additionally performed like patients who have cabbages or coronary artery bypasses might have to have reoperations. They may actually have to have repeat coronary bypasses. My grandfather, he ended up having, I think, a double bypass, and then he had a quadruple bypass or a triple then a quadruple at different sessions, right? So um, depending on the timing associated with the procedure, you have some additional codes that might commonly be performed with your bypass procedures. Let me see if I can find my little thing come up here. Uh, will it do it if I, no. Okay. Uh, get my search box. I closed it. It's fine. Right. So I have a CPT code 33530 for reoperations within a certain period of time um, after a month. And that's because of the healing that takes place. And when they do these procedures, these are open procedures, they actually have to do a sternotomy, meaning they have to cut through the breastbone and, or, and then separate, like pull apart the chest wall in order to access the heart. So this is an open heart procedure. Um, and once they close that space back up, after 30 days, I mean, just like if you cut yourself, you get a scab or a scar, that happens in 
uh, a chest wound as well. So there's scar tissue, there's healing that's taken place. So there's a little more risk. 33530 is like a modifier 22. It's more risk. So if that procedure is performed, you want to go ahead and report that. Um, when it comes to uh, endovessel endoscopy, meaning looking at a vessel that they want to use, we also have a code uh, 33508 for vessel endoscopy, which is what they may do when they're procuring and trying to get vessels that they want to use. Um, and then, of course, you have your your codes for the graft for procurement that you see within your guidelines. So my fem pop vein, my upper extremity vein, my um, if I looked at my arterial code, for example, they would give me code for my upper extremity artery. You just have to know what those are. So those are ancillary or additional procedures that you can report. So what's the summary? Food for thought questions when you're coding cabbages. First, you need to see what was used. Was it arteries only? veins only or both if it's veins only you get one code from 33510 to 6. Um, if it's veins and arteries you get a code from 33517 uh, range and add that to the arterial codes right and report the number of anastomotic points um, so first question is how many um, what vessels were used, how many anastomotic points, and were there any additional procedures? Those are your three questions. Now, I want to make sure you're clear on what anastomotic points is, and I think it's beautifully depicted in your uh, CPT book. I hate that I can't write on the screen with the program that I'm using, but don't think that the number of graphs has to do with like the number of these pieces that you see, right? So you would think, oh, this is, and I think it's not great because you think, well, one, two, three, well, four, right? Um, that's four. Just because I used the internal mammary, which is one vessel, doesn't mean I have one bypass. Let's say, for example, like this is long, so they pulled it way, way down, and you don't count the proximal connection. You don't count the, the, the incision or the point that pulls the blood flow. You count all the points that that blood flow is going to. So let's say you know, this patient had a couple of obstructions, but you just use this one graph. I could actually, again, take this blood because this is the mammary, so it already has the, the proximal connection. I don't count that. And I have one sewing point here. That's one anastomosis. But if I decided to stretch and pull this all the way down and pull this vessel down to this point, right, and put the end here, and then I cut a, an opening in the side and anastomosed, anastomos, which is just performing a connection of two things that aren't normally connected, right? And I anastomosed it to this end. So I made an incision, I connected this one here, and then I took the end and I put it here. That one vessel would have two anastomotic points. So because the vessel that I use is an artery, and has two distal connection points, one on the LAD, one in whatever this vessel is, I have to use my imaging thing for that, that would be two arterial bypasses, which is why I don't really love this picture because you can always say, oh, well, one, two, three, four, that's how you got four. But really, they don't have to use four different graphs to anastomose to four different points. They can use two graphs and put two distal holes in each one of those graphs and connect them distally to two different points. And that still counts as two arterial bypasses. So this is not a, and let me see if I can, I want an operative report, no cabbage. I want to see if I can find one that really, your CPT book, if you buy the professional edition, has a really beautiful visualization of that. Uh, is this one? No, but I like this one a little bit better because let's say there's an obstruction here and an obstruction here. I can do what they call a side to side anastomosis, meaning I took this vessel that's a vein, I cut a hole in the side of it, and then I cut a hole in the side of the vessel 
that I'm feeding and then I connected them, I anastomosed them. That would be one connection point. And then that distal end that I attached to would be a second connection point. So I would count this venous graft as not count the proximal connection, don't count the connection to the aorta or the arterial supply. I would say one point here if I connected, second point here. So that would be two using veins if that's all I did right um but even if here like this is a vein as well so if that was one two and this was a third one just the distal end this one right here the distal point this would be one point of contact second point of contact that i'm you got to visualize because it's not actually anastomosed here um and then three points of contact so from my venous code i would say a venous graph using three contact points so i would report from this range and say that one venous graph that I use or the venous, it doesn't make a difference. I have three distal contact points and I would report 33510 because that particular depiction only showed venous graphs. Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful. Hopefully uh, cabbages are a little more easy for you to report in that regard. Your operative report coding tips, if you have those, you wanna look at your anastomotic points um, remember, it's not the number of veins, because I only have one saphenous vein, so you think, well, you can only use one, but it's how many points I connect that saphenous vein to distally um, that would determine my code. So your documentation may say saphenous vein to the PDA, right, or saphenous vein to whatever. They're telling you what part, of, what artery that vessel went to, what artery was bypassed, and that is going to help you with your CPT coding. So thank you for visiting my channel. I hope you found the cabbage coding video helpful. Hopefully now going through your guidelines, you know the difference between the venous only codes that start 33510, the venous codes that are used in conjunction with the arterial codes that start 33517, and the arterial codes that is the only range we have for arterial that start 33533. I hope you found this video helpful. You know my saying, like it if you do, give me your commentary. Let me know if this video was helpful for you. Share it if you know someone it can help. Uh, subscribe so you know when I load and I'll look forward to your comments and see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.